Recess it, Mr. Vice Mayor. Sure, we can do that until we do the other. Is there a motion to recess? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so ordered. We'll stand in recess on that. That brings us into the Seminole Utilities Authority. Uh, roll call. Dee Patterson? Here. <clears throat> John Kramer? Here. Chris Anson? Here. Bill Walton? Here. Corey Crabtree? Here. Tim Poplar? Here. Stephanie Lambert? Larry Church? Here. Shane Fisher, we have a quorum. Consideration action of consent agenda. Second. Roll call. Dee Patterson? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Chris Anson? Yes. Bill Wampland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Motion passes. Are there any appearances or petitions from the audience for the utilities authority? If not, we then move to current business number one, consideration and possible uh, action to approve the revised water service agreement with the Tri-County Rural Water District Number 2 to provide water for the new Seminole High School in the Tri-County Service Area. So uh, you, this is the second time you guys have seen this. We caught uh, something before we actually presented the agreement to them uh, with relation to the type of line that would be installed. Uh, Brad did a great job of resolving the issue We've come to an agreement. Uh, I don't think there's any real hurt feelings over it, but there's definitely ruffled feathers. So, uh, but in the end, we got what we needed to have, and this is this is the correct agreement in front of you today. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Dee Patterson. Yes. John Kramer. Yes. Chris Anson. Yes. Bill Walton. Yes. Corey Crabtree. Yes. Tim Poplar. Yes. Larry Church. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, current business number two, an addendum to the agenda. Consideration and possible action to approve the quote from Jordan contractors for emergency sewer main repairs from 1323 Coolidge West to Roosevelt Street in the amount of $23,871 to be funded from the water sewer CIP fund. Roll call. Dee Patterson? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Chris Anson? Yes. Bill Wantlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Motion passes. There being no further business for the Utilities Authority, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. That brings us then to the regular meeting of the Seminole City Council. Roll call. Chris Anson? Here. Dee Patterson? Here. Stephanie Lambert? Larry Church? Here. Tim Poplin? Here. Bill Wantlin? Here. Corey Crabtree? Here. John Kramer? Here. Shane Fisher? We have a quorum. 
Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and kneel in prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Consideration and action of the consent agenda. So moved. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Didi Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Waltland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Franklin? Yes. Motion passes. Are there any appearances or petitions from the audience for the City Council? If not, we move on to approvals and acceptances. Bids, number one, consideration and possible action to approve the low bid of $15,100 from D&G Pence for the replacement of wrought iron fencing at Maple Grove Cemetery. This is a budgeted item to be funded from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund. Is that just going to be on the south side? Yes, sir. What do we have planned for the west? Uh, well, we're going to wait on direction from you guys, but currently we're thinking just chain link. Uh, it's going to be really expensive to try to go that whole length with wrought iron. So. Uh, more than likely, it'll be chain link or some form of that. Do you have a suggestion? No, I'd like to get with Mike on this office and talk about it. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. Dickie Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wamblin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number two, consideration and possible action to approve the purchase of two 2019 Type 1 Ford F450 4x4 ambulances at the state contract bid price of $186,995 each or $373,990 for both less a trade-in allowance of $18,000 for a net price of $355,990 to be funded from the series 2010 bond proceeds. Do you know some of the new boxes for transfer something? Uh, yes, new boxes? Yes, sir, it'll be a complete new apparatus. Just like we had that, what you brought up here. That no, no, these are actually the big, uh, we call them the not one, but the big square boxes on the back of it. It's the ones that we use for uh, our 911 calls, basically. Take about a year? Uh, yeah, as we spoke last well, month, we're, we're about 10 to 12 months out from the time we placed the order. Those are the heavy duty ones cheap, like you was talking about? Yeah, it's actually the truck chassis now. Yeah. Uh, we're going away from the gas V10, and we're going with the uh, power stroke. <clears throat> we feel like the power stroke is set up to where it's set up to set there in the idle. I mean, as a diesel compared to what we've got now with the, the gas and the V10s, they don't make any more. That's what we got now. We were told they're 300,000 mile vehicles and we're not gonna even get close to that. Talk a little bit about the trade-in versus using them as backup. <clears throat> um, we've got actually three ambulances that we're gonna be trading in. It's the current two that we use now, Rescue One and Two, and then we've got an old one left over from Medicus. We're going to trade those in and they can reutilize that box. Well, we can't use that box because we're going from a van chassis to a truck chassis. So we've got to redo. It's a completely different box on the back of it. Um, the reason why we're not going to do the remount, which would be uh, $50,000 cheaper per ambulance, we're going to be right back into the same situation we are now with a lightweight front end, a van chassis, running up and down the county roads, and we're just going to wind up being in the same position we are now five years from now. Is that due to the frame construction of the new ones? Yes. Uh, we're actually up, we're, we're putting a system on there. It's called a liquid spring system. 
should make the ride a little smoother in the back, but I can't guarantee you that. It's Oklahoma roads. <laughs> so I know everybody complains about the rough ride, but we're trying to do everything that we can. But it no is way a- No it could be configured to go on the old? No, 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 we've tried, but it's a completely different setup. What's the life expectancy of the new one? Well, uh, we're hoping a 10 year span. I mean, we're sitting at an eight, eight and a half now. With the ones you're discussing? Yep. That's what we're looking for. We're hoping that our last, uh, we're hoping that it's a 200,000 mile truck, if not more, being the diesel, uh, the diesel motor, the heavier duty chassis. We're going with a four wheel drive. 75% of our roads are in the county, just like what we're going through now with the rain and the muck. When the snow comes, we're going to be, we're good to go. Jerry, we do have a phone. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Anson? Yes. Gigi Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hopper? Yes. Bill Wattlin? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Craig? Yes. Motion passes. Current business, number three, consideration and possible action to approve the revised water service agreement with the Tri-County Rural Water District, number two, to provide water for the new Seminole High School in the Tri-County service area. Same thing, just uh, we've got rates in one and uh, multi-years on the authority, so we want to go ahead and have both the council and the utilities authority vote. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hanson? Yes. <clears throat> Dean Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. <coughs> Number four, consideration and possible action to approve granting free wellness center memberships to the seven board members and their families that serve on the board of the Seminole Community and Wellness Facilities Authority. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Chris Hansen? Yes. D.D. Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Abstain. John Kramer. Yes. Motion passes. Number five, consideration and possible action to approve the city addendum to the addition of city to deputation agreement for law enforcement and agreement with the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma for the purpose of providing for cross deputation of law enforcement officers employed by the Seminole Nation and the city of Seminole's police department. And uh, just let is the chief here. Come yes, down he's ready to go. <laughs> Okay, what this would be, we've, we've done it in the past with Seminole Nation Light Horse Police, where they've been cross-deputized to answer calls with us. This is going to be a little bit different in that, in the sense that we're also going to be cross-deputized with them. So we'll have a Seminole Nation Light Horse Commission. Uh, some of the officers throughout time will also get a BIA commission. Um, some of our officers will. But the, the biggest benefit for us is where we will now be having light horse will be able to back us up on calls and assist us on calls. If we're busy, which you know a lot of times we have a minimal amount of officers, uh, I say a minimal, I and mean, that's probably a wrong way to put it, but we, we have a limited amount of officers and then we'll get just packed up with calls that will give us somebody else to take those calls for us so that you know we don't have to be on every call. We don't, sometimes we don't have to uh, stall a call you might I say here again wrong wrong verbiage but we don't have to be respond to a call in 10 minutes we can have somebody respond to a call we can ask some all nation hey can you take this call and they can go respond to the call right now just out of curiosity can you go on the Indian territory and make a rest without them yes and they can without you yes and I would simply add this matter has been discussed in the bands of the Seminole Nation and certainly among our band, the Tuskegee Arjo and the others. This is greatly desired and greatly needed because the previous agreement has been canceled. That is, that, that's correct. You know, we, we have some, we're building a great working relationship that years ago we had a great working relationship with the Light Horse. And I, I was part of that working relationship and that over the last few years has gone away. Um, with with the administration that's in there now and our administration, 
we're rebuilding that relationship um, for all of us. It, it's a great thing. You know, Seminole Nation, there's times they'll have one or two light horse officers on shift at a time. You may have somebody in, you know, in Wawoka and they'll get a call, you know, to some property here in Seminole or just outside of Seminole, maybe even I-40. And they're, you know, 30, 40 minutes out and it's a violent call. This way we can respond for them and, and not have to worry about, you know, is it a tribal member on tribal property? Now we're, you know, we're, we're fully protected in that. Plus there's some resource sharing that we're able to do. I think we've worked out a memorandum of agreement with the, with the Life Horse on uh, with their BCR and uh, being uh, have access to tribal tags so that we can run tribal tags and vice versa. That's going to help. And it's just generally just an officer safety issue as well as a, to protect the citizens, give them a little bit more protection. It's a good thing. And, you know, to pass the, we just have to have the agreement uh, in place uh, to, to make it legal. So. To me, one of the biggest things is it shows, it shows the citizens of Seminole and the citizens of Seminole Light or Seminole Nation that work together, that we're all on the same team. I move to approve it. I'll second that. Roll call. <clears throat> Chris Anson? Yes. Dee Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Poplin? Yes. Dale Walton? Yes. <clears throat> Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number six, consideration of possible action regarding two options from Suddenlink regarding City of Seminole telephone and internet services. <coughs> two options. Uh, excuse me, just one second. Let me get there. Yeah. Uh, well, they're they're actually different a little bit in that we get a modem on one and the other one we don't. Chief. Baker, you want to you want to start us while I get to yeah. <clears throat> uh, so what what we've done is uh, probably about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, we changed our phone system, saving some money. We went to a wireless phone system, wireless internet. So what happens is when the storms come through, we lose connectivity. PD's down, FD's down, City Hall's down. So we kind of branched out, tried to find some people that wanted to partake and play with us and get us on a different system. We checked with Suddenlink, we checked with uh, OneLink. Suddenlink came in and we had fiber optic running in front of the 901 PD FD complex. We've got fiber optic at City Hall. Uh, we've got fiber optic around town that Suddenlink will able to latch onto, give us 100 megabytes per system up and down a little more reliable system it's underground and we're not having to deal with the Wi-Fi side of it um, and we felt like suddenly being a part of our community we wanted to try to help those guys out in return they can help us we reached out to them we've had probably four or five meetings with them uh, they came in they created a plan they're going to eat all the cost of establishing all the connections to all of our well sites FVPD, number one complex, City Hall. I mean, everywhere that we make a connection, they're going to eat that cost. Including laying the fiber. Yes, including lay, laying the fiber. Um, the two options that you have, the first one option is a little cheaper than the other. The difference in those two, when we spoke to them the first time, it was we wanted internet service at City Hall, the number one complex. The second agreement has internet or modem access at the other facilities, which would be the cemetery, um, public works, street department, uh, all those facilities that currently have internet access at their facility now. So that's the difference in the two. I think there's a little bit of money change, uh, not a whole lot, but that's kind of where we're at with the, this process. The important thing is what we're backing out of is the service area. You guys bought us new phones, and we went with the Nobel on the service and, and RSI. The phones are still going to be great. They'll work just fine, so we're going to keep the phone system. It's just the, the connectivity that we're going to be changing. So here's where we're at. Um, we've got the two, and I, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that we go with the uh, the 44,9, uh, 4,494.85 and the 17, 
$1,749.85 bid. But what I would like to do, since Sharon is, has been ill for the last few days, I'd like for her to review this one more time. So in your motion, if you choose to make it, I'd like for it to be approved that contract contingent upon final staff review so that I get Sharon's eyes on it and make sure that everything that she sees is compatible because she was the one that was involved with AT&T and no bail changeover. So just one final set of eyes on this would be helpful. I didn't read the fine print on that, but that's another one of those. This is a 36 month contract. And is there an option for the city in this? Uh, you know, plus the cancellation fees. I know they do things a little differently than some businesses. I hadn't looked at this. I uh, honestly have not looked at the sudden link contract, but the if we approve it out of the city uh, council, then we can't obligate anything past the current budget year for one year anyway. So by operational law, it cannot stand. They typically put those municipal clauses in there. So if you want to go ahead and pass that again, subject to staff review with that particular clause or addendum to it, I'll be happy to make sure it gets on there. If they won't abide by that, we'll bring it back to the utilities authority and just have you review it again. I'm going to make the motion by what Brad said. Oh, <laughs> 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 you got that, Jay? <laughs> Are you out any money with the other company for the cancellation of any kind of contract that we currently have with Nobel? Or? So, <clears throat> Nobel, um, so I'm in, let me just interject. We had a motion. We need a second, and then we need to come to court okay. for the question. Is second. It? second. Second. All right. Now, go ahead. So, okay. I'm in negotiations right now with uh, AT&T. Uh, there's a, a law firm on the West Coast that have, they've, we've been going back and forth, and, you know, there's been an issue um, about a past due bill that we may owe AT&T. Uh, the reality is, is that when Nobel took uh, over our internet-based system, uh, we, Nobel was supposed to notify them. And we know that Nobel uh, had the information and we eventually ended up having to do it ourselves because the person on the other end apparently wasn't doing their job. That person's no longer there. We, there is a dispute on what we owe, and um, I anticipate we'll probably get it favorably resolved. Right now, we're just going back and forth and doing a bunch of information gathering. Uh, I can say that Sharon has extensive documentation where the city did everything on our part uh, to notify uh, Nobel and to put this monkey on Nobel's back. And they have acknowledged, all but acknowledged, that was their mistake. Um, but we've still got to, got to work through that. So I can't give you any information as far as money or, it's not, I won't say it's not that much, but it's, I think it's just a year's worth of bills. And then Plexar was the system that we, um, Plexar, which is the you service. The, the total amount I can't. Okay. I'm going to guess with you just so I don't you don't leave here okay. without. Uh, as I recall, the original AT&T was like 33,000 requested. So uh, they came back and said, "Hey, if you'll pay the pay 11,000, we'll we'll be gone." Well, our position at the time was we still believe that it's Nobel's issue, and their only excuse is, "Well, she's no longer here." Right. Well. <laughs> They were still representing right. to us that they were canceling the AT&T. They handled it all. It was supposed to be a turnkey job. So uh, I'll tell you that it's going to be somewhere, I feel strongly, that it'll be somewhere between 11000 and 33000 if we have to pay it. If we have to pay it. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> it's a bad word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the numbers that you were quoting is that is that a, the monthly charge, the the four thousand, uh, the the numbers that you were saying yes. on the two different plans. The 
four thousand was a setup charge, and then it was seventeen hundred a month, wasn't it? Right. I got you. That's right. yeah. We're we're saving. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we used to run sixty thousand dollars a year on. Yes. Yeah. Either way, we're still saving big time yeah, over what we were with AT and T's. Plexar was terrible. My phone bill is twelve, thirteen thousand a year. So my phone bill is twelve, thirteen thousand a year. So it don't sound like a whole lot to me <laughs> <laughs> for a whole city. <laughs> Okay, the motion and second. Are there any other questions? Uh, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so we've talked about budgetary clause. We've talked about being this contingent upon staff for you. Yes. What is the actual motion? Motion is to approve the bid that Steve recited subject to staff review and inclusion of the municipal budgetary clause, correct? Well, I understood. That's what I thought you said. Can I, can I can I clarify one thing that Tim asked about? Yeah, the forty four ninety four ninety five is the monthly charge. The seventeen forty nine eighty five is the setup fee. So we had them flipped. Okay, and that's for all. That's for all. Everything. everything. The inclusion of what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Everything. I move to approve if we're at that point. Well, yeah, the motion is, is on the table already. Yeah. And we just had the discussion, so we're ready for roll call. Yes, sir. Chris Hansen? Yes. Edie Patterson? Yes. Larry Church? Yes. Tim Hoffman? Yes. Bill Wantland? Yes. Corey Crabtree? Yes. John Kramer? Yes. Motion passes. Number seven, discussion of a plan to provide the public with access to a swimming pool during the summer. <coughs> Okay, uh, last summer I know you guys were frustrated, as were we, uh, with regard to not being able to, to get some uh, swimming area for our, for our kids and families. Uh, we did all we could to get the Grisso Mansion. Uh, in the end, we could not get that secured. Uh, we've opened dialogue with the college about perhaps using their swimming facility over the summer. And Roughly, we're talking about going from Memorial Day to uh, basically August the 1st. Uh, in this agreement, it, the discussion so far, and, and it's not been reduced to paper, I wanted to get in front of you, and that's why it's only listed for discussion. I wanted to get in front of you to talk a little bit about what, what has been discussed is that their, their swimming pool is in disrepair. It's still functioning okay. I don't know with a lot of heavy use how it's going to hold up. So what I've been talking with Lana about is for the city to come with a lump sum up front to do the heavy repairs that need to be done on that swimming pool in exchange for a five-year type deal. They seem very receptive to that. Uh, I think their pumps are in good condition. Uh, the heat and air system is in really bad condition. The piping itself under the swimming pool is in horrendous condition. In fact, it's so bad we couldn't even open it to begin to inspect. So uh, I suspect what is going to happen is that we're going to have to, and I, I was hoping Mike would be here because I don't know the terminology, but. Uh, in effect, what we do is we pull the, a, a heavy plastic film through the line and then we superheat it so that it expands and, and makes, basically makes the new water line so that the corrosive pipe is now covered and not going to leak under pressure. I think that needs to be done. The heat and air needs to be replaced. The pool needs to be repainted and some interior work. Now. The bad part of this, even though they've got um, inside the swimming pool, they've got handicap accessibility. In other words, they can lower wheelchairs, but the restrooms are not. And I'm not 
necessarily wanting to get involved in that unless you tell me to. Uh, I want to make the minimum improvements to get it functioning well so that we can have a place for the next three to five years for our citizens to swim and uh, we're still in negotiation in terms of hours but certainly it would be you know 10 10 o'clock would start lessons similar to what we had at the, at the municipal pool and then one o'clock to roughly six o'clock would be public swim uh, they're not entirely sure how it's going to work with the concession because they have a concessionaire that's contracted to do everything on campus so uh, we've got to get a waiver from them in order to do that because we are going to be responsible for staffing uh, clearly there's not a lot of college students that hang around there during the summer months so we're going to be responsible for staffing one of the things that our pool manager had always been able to count on was a, a minimal salary but they kept the concession so that that augmented what their salary was coming in at so we, we've got a lot to work on I would like your feedback is this a direction even though it's an indoor pool uh, I think we can maybe have a sunbathing area out there for them but is this a direction you want to go or is it no not really interested. I lived in Norman. I don't know what the city's arrangement was with OU, but the o OU pool was accessible to the public, and it worked really well. It was uh, it was nice to be able to utilize their swimming pool. Other than that, I guess we could elect to build a pool in our city attorney's backyard <laughs> liking liking that idea so I, I, I at this point I, you know I'm, I'm favorable I'm, I'm thinking that that's a, a good thing to look at okay all right I'll continue the discussions then and maybe refine what it is that we're going to be repairing get it into a, a word document that you guys can review and then if you can think of anything that I left out, then... Do you have any idea about expenses on that? What the... Are we talking about trade and repair expenses for rental of the pool? Yes. The yes. Yeah. In other words, we would rent the pool for this amount, but those, those have to go to repair of the facility. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I would rather not tip my hand and give you an amount. Okay. Yet. All right. uh, I just think that we've got to get some prices first. I don't know how much that, I'm calling it pipe bursting, that's not the right term. But yeah. the, the pipe fixing is, uh, you know, it's, it's not gonna be cheap. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's not. And, and, and the heat and air system, it, it stays on 24-7. Yeah. And I, I don't know that that's the best design, but we're gonna get it looked at and see if somebody can come up. And that's with because it's indoor. Right. Yes, uh -huh. and the and the moisture, you, know, you gotta you gotta keep it. Uh, they, they call it makeup air. There's got to be a lot of makeup air put into that pool. Mm -hmm. Question I have: uh, Are they going to take care of the maintenance, or is that something that's going to be looked at? Yes, no, they're they're going to continue with the maintenance of the pool. Now there may be uh, some discussion about us checking chlorine at the levels and things like that, that would probably be something that we would have to do. But they would pay for the chlorine? Uh, that's, that's still a negotiation and part of the, uh, I can't imagine that they would want us to pay the chemical cost and then them use it on the off hours. So uh, we're gonna have some he heavy traffic which uses more chemical. So, but that's part of what we're going in the in the meantime um, you know the the deal is still out there we if we want to build our own municipal pool you guys heard it from the presenter we can have him back at any time uh, our pool guy says that you're looking at four million to build an average pool five to six if you want to make it some you know kind of a destination real. point uh, you know, I, my only, I've not really discussed this a ton with Jay, but 
I, I know we don't have that kind of income to carry that kind of debt load. Uh, my only thought on this would be that we would have to go to a, a general obligation bond through property tax, uh, similar to what we did to build the hospital clinic. And uh, to give you an idea, we're, we haven't had that, yeah, when did we retire the clinic bond? Uh, yeah, we haven't had a GO bond on for five years. That's very, very unusual for a municipality. Uh, almost all municipalities, you know, I don't know, Broken Arrow has, I, I think, like 43 mills uh, on theirs for city improvements, uh, ranging from streets to wellness centers to other things. So uh, we, we wanted to keep, because of our sales taxes is, is high, but we wanted to keep our, our tax load on our citizens very low but this is one of those amenities that the community really kind of needs to have. It's just kind of a bare minimum deal uh, to keep a swimming pool in your, in your deal, in your arsenal. Thoughts on that? Nobody wants a swimming pool? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you could use my lake. <laughs> we have a lake. We have a pond behind the wellness center. Uh, the kind of health department doesn't really like us to say that. I'm sorry. What kind of percentage does that look like on property taxes? Like how much would it raise? You know, Man, Chris, I'm sorry. I'm not prepared for that. Because uh, yeah, that's what people really want to know. Is yeah. How much is it gonna... As always, it, it really depends on how many years you're going to span it. You know, if you're going to go for a 20 year, 25 year bond, then, you know, I think you could probably get in for eight to 11 mils in an increase. Uh, but I, I'd want to review that before I give you a final answer. Because hopefully a pool would last much, much longer than 25 years and people would be willing to do it. Well, this pool will last for, what, almost 70 years. Yeah, long time. So have uh, <laughs> and we put a lot of money in it this last 10 or 15 yes. years. Yes, tremendous amount of money. Yes, we did. Okay, that brings us into reports. The mayor is not here because he is attending his mother's funeral today. Mm -hmm. We do have a plaque that will be presented to him, and I want to read that in the record. Presented to Dr. Shane Fisher, in appreciation for serving 14 years as mayor and four years as a city council member. Your city employees, citizens, and colleagues wish you to know your dedication to a life of service has been extraordinary. Your gift for turning dismal situations into prosperity has put Seminole on a path that few rural communities will ever achieve. Simply put, the people of Seminole are indebted to you for your public service. Your determination, compassion, and brilliance as a leader have positively impacted thousands of lives, and your impact will continue to be felt for decades. Thank you for giving of yourself so selfishly to the people of Seminole. And this will be presented to him. City Manager. All right. Uh, I want to invite everyone to a very, very important event, especially uh, I, I don't know. I think we could probably have four or five thousand people there tomorrow at 11:30 a.m. <laughs> One of our very own is being crowned. I'm sorry, promoted uh, to colonel. Brad Carter is going to be a full bird colonel tomorrow at 11:30 at the Wellness Center, and uh, this is a big deal. It really is. I'm, I'm joking with him, but it's a huge, huge deal. It's a huge responsibility that he's taking on, and we're very grateful for his service. So 1130 tomorrow, I hope everybody shows up. It's going to be a pretty cool deal. Uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of the top brass is coming in to, uh, to be involved in this, and hopefully we can show them how proud we are of, of all of them. So please make time to be there. Uh, 
I want to want to mention one more time about the roundabouts that we are considering. Uh, we're going to take this to the planning commission very soon. We've got the engineering firm is working it up. Uh, we had a little bit of a pause. Uh, the roundabouts. I'll describe it one more time. I know you guys have heard it so much, you're kind of tired of it, but. Uh, we're looking at the corner of Strother and Bourne Boulevard. So right there by the cemetery uh, where the old USA independent tank area was, we're looking at putting a roundabout there. The purpose that, for doing that is once the improvement is made on Bourne and Broadway, when the, uh, when the Department of Transportation finishes the overlay, which, by the way, will begin on May the 5th, and if, as they always do, they'll begin it on April 15th and make me look like a ridiculous, but right now they're telling me May the 5th, uh, and once they leave there, they are turning that back to the city, and they're going to say, here you go, this is now a city street, you guys are responsible for all of the repairs. Well, we don't have the 2.5 to 3.7 million dollars to overlay that road any like ODOT does every four or five years. We must take the heavy truck traffic off of that street uh, because we don't have the resources to overlay it again, to redo that. So the best thing we can do is put a, a traffic feature in uh, the other option is to put stop signs every 350 to 500 feet uh, on Bourne Boulevard. And I run late to the meetings at the college all the time. I don't think I can handle that many stop signs. So it would, in my opinion, would be better to put one or two roundabouts. That are, they're a nice feature anyway for a community. Uh, it'll set us apart, be a little bit different. And it will be too tight of a turn for a truck to make. So that will, will of course, we'll have it all signed and tell them no through trucks, et cetera. We've made provisions for Ronnie Allison, Blue Wave Boats, and, and Paul Levy Pipe uh, to be able to get their trucks down ideal. You'll notice that we've already done the, the, the micro overlay going down ideal street south going off of Warren Boulevard. <clears throat> so uh, this thing's fixing to take an uptick in activity. More than likely we will have a public hearing at the Planning Commission when our engineering is ready. ODOT has already been advised of our plan. Um, okay, they threw a tantrum. Uh, <clears throat> but what they told us was, you guys don't want to do that. It's going to be a nightmare. You guys need to talk to Ardmore. They're, they're taking one out. Uh, it's just not going to work. So I've never heard anything negative from other city managers. So I called the Ardmore city manager, and uh, we got to visit. He said, Steve, I, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, yeah, we're taking it out to make it bigger because we love it. So I, you know, I think this is the best option that I can see. And, and it's possible we could look back in four or five years and say, yeah, we're gonna have to expand that. It's not working. We can't get the trucks to keep from running right over the top of it, even though there's a six foot concrete wall. Uh, you know, there, I'm gonna tell you that this is, there is a risk. We may come back and say, this is a bad idea, but Everything that I can do and research that I've done says that it'll work. It'll, it'll be a good thing. And uh, if we can make it a scenic uh, deal and, and turn that corner, once we get the grant for the, the Blue Wave Boats expansion into the independent tank, that corner is going to look a lot different, friends. It goes from our worst eyesore to something we can all be proud of. So I'm excited. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I just watched a video a while ago about a drug bust that our police department did. Uh, Channel 5, I think it's on Channel 5 News tonight, so if we get you home before 10 o'clock, you'll see on Channel 5 News about a drug bust. 
that our guys did out here at the executive end. And uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of them, how far they have come, how, how proud I am of the leadership that Chief has given these guys, uh, the training, the, the whole attitude of the department is at an all-time high in my opinion. So I'm really proud of them. If you get a chance, shake their hand, pat them on the back, and uh, and let them know. And as, as bad a time as Bryant Baker and his staff give our police department, they are top flight. They are top <laughs> flight. They have plenty of time to sleep and rest while they're working. Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the deal is, is we catch them on the all side right, of those. All right, time out. <laughs> <laughs> Technical foul. All right, here we go. All right. Wow. Uh, hey, you know, last night uh, Jeff and I went to a, a ceremony that was incredible. One more time, uh, the cross country state champions got their rings for their state championship last night and they had a great ceremony. It was really cool. We're proud of those guys and man, that takes a, just a ton of work. You see them running around our Magnolia Park and I'm, I'm really proud of them. Congratulations once again. Made in Oklahoma is April 5th and 6th. Don't miss out on that. Uh, want to welcome all our new restaurants. We seem to be getting uh, several going on now. I uh, want to welcome them. The high school progress is going very well. Uh, it's a little bit slowed with all the mud. Uh, we've got an issue right now with ODOT being a little perturbed because of all the mud that's being tracked onto the driving surface and the parking that is being parked on the shoulder. Uh, so if you hear that they're writing tickets, the highway patrol is writing tickets out there, the, the, the contractor has been warned. And, you know, I feel for him, but the fact of the matter is there probably should have been a little bit more money put into the, the aggregate, the, the gravel that was put down there so that they could run in inclement, rather, in inclement weather. So. That's going on. Uh, I mentioned May 5th is the target on Bourne and Broadway improvement. So this is being done in two phases. The first phase will basically end where uh, Milt Phillips, it'll go from the college to Milt Phillips. So that is all being done with federal highway money. Uh, federal highway money will not touch the bricks. So the rest of that, from the bricks on past the bus station, will be done with state money. And so uh, that'll be done at a, at a different time. But look for May the 5th. We're going to hear, as we did on Highway 9 during that improvement, we're going to hear a lot of belly aching because there'll be times when the whole street is closed in certain sections. So, uh, But it'll be a lot better when it's finished. I mean, a lot better. Um, you know, uh, Brad and I went, uh, Chief and, and our code enforcement went and uh, went to a marijuana, uh, well, it was for several things. Cannabis. Cannabis. No. <laughs> no, because it dealt with hemp as well, and I'm learning the terminology. Okay. Uh, but we went uh, to a seminar and it dealt, some of it dealt with marijuana and, and implications of what the state has in front of them to rewrite some of the rules uh, versus what was on the ballot and all of that seems to be coming out now so I think certainly by May the end of May when the legislature closes that we'll have some final uh, some finality to uh, some of the language that we need uh, in the meantime there's there's a lot of discussion and some case law being developed, but uh, you know we've got in there, for example, we've got mention of can't be within so far of the church. Uh, right now, it looks like that cannot be upheld. Is that what you took away? So there are pieces of our ordinance that are not enforceable. So rather than trying to rewrite it every three weeks, as cases start to come through the courts, I think our best bet is just to kind of be silent and wait on the final word to come out of the legislature 
what was the name of the, she said, Unityville or something like yes. that? Yeah, so. Unityville. Unityville, okay. Right. All right, so the unity bill is in place, or uh, is in play at the legislature. I don't even know if it's been out of committee or if it's going to the floor to vote, but it is, and there, there's a lot of discussion surrounding it, both pro and con, but we're not going to bring you a rewrite of the ordinance until we have a little bit better fact. Lastly, I just want to offer our uh, condolences and prayers to the folks uh, at Kanawha Public Schools. Uh, what a terrible, terrible situation that is. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys that ran on the call, and I'm proud of the Sheriff's Office, and, and everybody to a person says how well the emergency services performed during that event. Um, our guys are having a little bit of a tough time with it. I've offered to have counseling with them and, uh, and send them to counseling if necessary. So uh, that's all I have, Vice Mayor. City Attorney. Nothing. <laughs> Just nothing. No words of wisdom? <laughs> I have, I have, I've been boxed in over here. You're a speechless. <laughs> You're a colonel. Speechless. Come on. Ward one, uh, I'll pass and turn it to Larry Church. Well, I think the roundabout, uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I think the roundabout is uh, ingenious. I think that is just absolutely the best idea to uh, preserve that street that you could have came up with. Thank you. And for you civilians who don't know about bird kernels, well, I mean, this is serious. Uh, when you get to be a bird colonel, you've got some stroke. Yeah. It means that you are in line to be a general. It means that you're not being rifted out by being passed over. Uh, the, my one year, four months, 26 days, five hours and 10 minutes of exposure <laughs> to the military uh, pointed out to me that in the officer rank, um, you get a lot of majors, and then they get passed over and go home. You get a, not as many lot birds, they get passed over and go home. But when you get to be a colonel, I don't know when they get to go home. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank That's you. just. <laughs> and um, I'm, I, like you, I'm, I'm just proud of our police force as it can be. Chief, Chief Hanson has done a great job with that, with our police force. Um, I just, uh, it just seems to improve every day. I'm glad of that. And of course, my favorite topic is that charity for the, for the poor. Um, for the most part, people don't care much about donating money to folks that they think could work and earn money on their own, or providing uh, some part of a base income for women and children. But until we, um, until women have parity in our society, we don't really have a free society. We just don't. Women still making, I guess, the highest estimates are 80 percent of what men make. Um, many women are single mothers trying to raise their children on the, on their own. I don't know if you've ever looked at the cost of uh, child care, but it's prohibited for most people to work. And the surest way that has been demonstrated to eliminate poverty in the world is to liberate women. So, just food for thought. Starts with girls. So women and girls, single mothers and children, need our help. I, I do have.
like to comment something else on, on becoming a bird colonel. The Seminole word for colonel is hajo, which also means drunk or crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my mom that, Bill. <laughs> Two, John Famous. Or three, Corey Crabtree. Tim. I have nothing, thank you. Ward four, Chris Hansen. Dee Dee Patterson. Well, I'm happy that the fencing out there at the cemetery is about to be done. That's a good deal. But we need to take a real close look at Bill Street. That street has really gotten bad lately. So if you'll pass that on to Mike, I would appreciate it. Congratulations, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Your father would always tell you that I outrank you because I have time and courage. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be the boss. That's right. But that's quite an honor. Thank you. I'm proud of you. That brings us in. We have an executive session. Do, do we want to take up the gas executive session first or the city? They're, they're together. I know. They both have it. Can we do the city first? All right, there's a motion uh, to go into executive session. Second? Second. 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 Second.